Hey, my friends, welcome back to Jujubee DIY. I'm Sarah. Thanks so much for joining me today. Before you head over to Hobby Lobby for fall decor, run to the Dollar Tree instead for some supplies to make some decor dupes for huge savings. I'm gonna show you how in this video, so stay tuned. Before we get started on our first DIY, we're gonna make some texture paste. The recipe for this is three tablespoons of baking soda, one tablespoon of school glue, can be clear or white, and then one tablespoon of acrylic paint, and that can be chalk paint or just regular acrylic paint, doesn't matter. And then you choose the color you'd like to use. So if you want a different color of texture paste, just add a different color of paint. So you're gonna mix that all together and you're gonna kind of mix it until you've got this consistency of like loose frosting. You want it to be thick enough to kind of stay where you put it, but thin enough to spread out. So if it's too thin, then just add a little bit more baking soda. And if it's too thick, add a little more paint. I've painted one of these taller MDF pumpkins from the Dollar Tree, um, the sage color from Folk Art Home Decor Chalk Paint. And then I'm going to lay a stencil down on top of it. This stencil came from BB Craft, but uh, they sell them on Amazon. Or if you have a Cricut or cutting machine, you can make your own. Now I'm just going to use a card here to spread the texture paste on. And you just want to make sure that you've got a very even coat on it. And it needs to be not too thick. I think I probably did it a little too thick. Uh, it dried just fine and is not crumbling or anything, but I probably, probably would have gone a little bit thinner on my texture paste. So now while it's still wet, just remove your stencil and then you're gonna let that dry thoroughly. So probably 24 hours at least. While we wait for the other pumpkin to dry, we're gonna work on this one. This is just one of the smaller MDF pumpkins and I am just gonna add some thumbtacks to the backside and I am cutting off the point with some wire snippers and then gluing them on. I did end up going outside and just hammering those in. It was a little easier on my hands to hammer it instead of trying to take the backs off those. But the Dollar Tree does carry those puff stickers uh, that would work really nicely here. So just make sure you glue those on. I painted that small white pumpkin all white and then had a third pumpkin that was the taller of the two that I painted in the Waverly chalk paint in mineral. Now I'm gonna go in with a dry chip brush and some of the apple barrel um, burnt umber. <laughs> I almost forgot the color of it. It's been a while since I've used the burnt umber to distress with, but I thought that that would look really lovely on these pumpkins. Now the Hobby Lobby pumpkins did not have any distressing and the pumpkins were more neutral. So you could definitely go for a more neutral look with your pumpkins if you were gonna do this dupe as well. But I wanted to add a little bit of color and a little bit of distressing, make it look a little more farmhouse. And so that's what I chose to do. But of course, it's your choice as to what you wanna do with your pumpkins. Now, before you move on from this step, I would definitely paint the backs of your pumpkins all one color so choose like a dark color black brown something like that and just paint the back sides of your pumpkins i waited until the very end to paint the backs of my pumpkins and it was a little more difficult to get those pumpkins painted so my suggestion is to paint the backs now so you're just going to keep distressing until you are happy with how your pumpkins look Real quick, while I finish up the distressing on this pumpkin, I wanted to tell you about my Facebook group that I host with my friend Lisa over at Our Gray House called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. We have tons of members sharing inspiration and projects, and we'd love to see what you're up to as well. So I will leave a link in my description box down below. Feel free to join us over there if you'd like. Also, make sure you check me out on Instagram. I always try to post pictures from the projects that I've created here on YouTube. And from time to time, I create a funny reel. So go check me out over there. So you may have noticed that while we were doing our texture paste, 
the texture paste ran off of the edge a little bit. So to fix that, I'm just going to take a box knife and kind of shave that texture paste down a little bit and then go in with the standing sponge and really sand it down flat. You don't have to use the box knife if that makes you nervous. Just use your sanding sponge and then sand it off. It'll just take you a little bit longer depending on how thick your texture paste was, but it's um, really easy to fix. And then you just paint it with the original color and don't forget to distress those edges. Now I'm gonna add some of these Jenga blocks to the bottom of the brown pumpkin for height. Um, I love to have these Jenga blocks on hand. I think they are great and you can usually find them in thrift stores. A lot of people get Jenga blocks for gifts and then nobody ever plays Jenga. So they give them to the thrift stores and I can usually find Jenga blocks in my thrift store. So keep an eye out if you uh, like the size of those. I think they're a great size, but I'm just gonna glue two of them stacked up to the bottom of this pumpkin and that makes a nice height difference for my two taller pumpkins. So then I'm gonna kind of line it up, figure out where I need to put the glue and then glue my green pumpkin or my textured pumpkin to that brown one. Now, because of the height difference in the pumpkins and the texture paste and stuff, I did need to put a little Jenga block on its side um, to lift the one side of the white pumpkin up so that it was even. So you might just have to play around with that a little bit to get the right thickness. You might just have to use a few um, craft sticks or something else. Just see what you've got on hand and play with it. So as you can see, I painted the back of everything in a chocolate brown color and now I'm just gonna add some twine around the middle. So the Hobby Lobby days did have the twine wrapped around a few times. So I just wrapped mine around three times, added a twine bow. And that is pretty much all there is to this dupe. Very simple, very easy, and very cost effective. My cost was $3.75 compared to the original price of $14.99. And I love how these turned out. I do love that pop of color, even though this is still pretty neutral. For our next DIY, we're gonna use one of these thankful, grateful, blessed signs from the Dollar Tree. This was a new to me sign. I don't know if this was new to Dollar Tree altogether or just new to my store, but I really liked the size of it. So I'm gonna take the whole thing out of the frame and then I'm going to remove that thankful, grateful, blessed chipboard sign. My original idea was to use the front side of it. I started to try and peel the paper off. It wasn't coming off easily. So I said, you know what, we're just going to use the back. So I am just going to add some um, glue stick to the back side of this sign and then put some scrapbook paper over the top of it. And you can use any scrapbook paper that you would like. This just happens to be kind of a gray color. And then I'm going to go in and make some shiplap marks with my pencil. If you want to avoid this step, you can just get shiplap paper and put that in there instead. And then you don't have to go in with your pencil and ruler and make shiplap marks. Next, I'm gonna get out one of these galvanized words. I'm gonna use the thankful word, and then we're going to cut out some of these eucalyptus leaves from this rub-on transfer from the Dollar Tree. And I am just going to kind of cut these out, uh, all of them, because I wasn't really sure which ones I wanted to use or where I wanted to use them. So the thankful sign is not glued down or anything. I am just using it as a placeholder until I get my uh, leaves figured out where I want them. And then of course, this is just a rub on transfer. So you just place it down onto the paper and then use something kind of firm to rub the transfer on. So just make sure that you, after you rub it, you just lift it up slowly so you can see if you have missed anything. 
and then you're just going to layer those leaves on um, however you think. So I'm gonna kind of place this one down. It's overlapping, but that's okay because I like that look of it being overlapped. Now that we have our leaves on, we're going to add our word and I'm going to use a strong adhesive for this because um, hot glue and metal don't really like each other too much and it will just pop off if you use hot glue. So I'm going to use this uh, quick grip glue, which is like E6000, and then I'll let that dry uh, for a few hours before I play with it again. Now I'm showing you that I did give it a bow galvanized look and if you're not sure how to do that, I will link a video up above. Now I'm gonna add in some fall foli foliage, <laughs> foliage, <laughs> add some fall foliage with some of these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. And I just thought that that would give it a nice um, fall look and fill it in a little bit more. And now I am just going to measure out the bottom of my frame. This was something that I wanted to make sure was centered. I don't generally use a ruler uh, to make sure things are centered, but this one, I really wanted to make sure this bow was right smack dab in the center. And here is a look at how it turned out. I love this. My cost is $185 compared to the original cost of $12.99. And I actually like mine better. What do you think? Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video so far. If you are finding value in what you're seeing, make sure that you hit that like button and comment. The engagement on my channel really helps uh, the algorithm to see it <laughs> and it helps my channel to grow. So I really appreciate it. Uh, back to crafting. For this DIY, we're gonna use two of these Dollar Tree Square tile plaques. Um, and I'm just going to take that paper off, spritz it with some water, scrape all that paper off, sand it down and get it all ready for painting. Now, if you can't find these exact plaques, you can go over to the toy section and get this puzzle game and use the backside of that. That'll work perfectly for this project. Now I painted one with the pumpkin color from Hobby, uh, from Hello Hobby chalk paint and the other is the sage from the folk art home decor chalk paint and then i'm going to go in with the apple burrow burnt umber and i'm going to distress the front of each of these plaques once i'm happy with the distressing i'm going to let it dry and then i'm going to add some vinyl to the front of my plaques i'm going to leave a link down below so you can either cut these out on your cutting machine or you can print these out use some carbon paper and then just paint in your words and design with either a paint pen or a thin paintbrush and paint. I've used both of those techniques um, in lots of different videos in the past showing you how you can do the same projects without actually having a Cricut or a cutting machine and vinyl. So there's always options if you don't have a cutting machine, but I will leave the link down below for both of these projects in case you want to print them out or cut them with your cutting machine. I absolutely love how these turned out and I think snuggle weather is such a cute sentiment. 
I think these might be my favorite project from today and I think I hit the nail on the head with this dupe. Let me know what you think. For our next DIY, we're gonna use one of these MDF copy cup decor pieces from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna take all that paper off. Again, I'm gonna use some water, let it set, scrape it off, and then sand it to create a very nice uh, paintable surface. Then I'm gonna go in with a pencil and I'm just going to mark off those areas where I want to paint them differently. So I'm gonna have the lid for the cup, the cup itself, and then the coffee sleeve. So. I'm just kind of going in, make those lines a little bit curved down towards the bottom of the coffee cup a little bit to make it look a little more realistic. But once you get your lines in there, you're just gonna take your paintbrush and your paint and you're gonna go in and paint those different colors. So I'm gonna make the cup itself orange, the lid will be black and the coffee sleeve will be white. And this is going to duplicate uh, pretty closely the project we're duping. So once everything is dry, I painted everything with two coats of paint. I'm gonna take the end of this paintbrush and I'm going to make some polka dots. Now, if this is not a technique that you want to do, you can create polka dots in all kinds of ways. Just use a paint marker to create polka dots, use a stencil, whatever you'd like. And then I decided to go ahead and add in some smaller polka dots with this little dotting tool from the Dollar Tree. So I just dip my paint or dip that tool into my paint and then add it to my project and it creates those cute little polka dots and then of course we need to add in a few little details using a small paintbrush um, and some white paint I'm going to create the separation for the lid and then I was going to go in and use these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree I did see them out in my Dollar Tree again this fall, and I think that this would be a very cute thing to put on the front of your cup. However, as I was taking mine off and getting it ready, it hit my finger right there and took a big chunk out of one of the pumpkins. I was so sad and disappointed because I really wanted to use those, but I had a couple of wood pumpkins in my stash from the Dollar Tree a few years ago, and decided to add those instead. So I'm just gonna take the little um, foam backing off of this bigger pumpkin. I'll glue that straight down to my cup and then I will actually save that piece of foam uh, to put on the back of this little pumpkin and make it two foam layers thick. Now I thought, why not make this double-sided and create a different look on the other side? So I painted it pretty much the same, distressed it, and added these little pumpkins that I felt were more rustic. So I felt they had kind of a cutesy on one side and more rustic on the other. And I think that that's fun to have double-sided decor. So here's a look at our project, $1.20 for my cost compared to the $9.99. I get that the Hobby Lobby one has two pieces that comes with it, but for a double-sided coffee cup decor piece, I think $1.20 is a pretty great deal and still a huge savings. For our final project, we're gonna use some of this Hippo Water Slide decal paper. I've used this in the past, and this is a really fun medium to work with. It's a great alternative to having a Cricut, and basically all you do is you print your, your pictures onto your um, decal paper. You take it outside, you give it three coats of clear spray. So I was showing you there that I was using the Krylon clear matte spray there. And you spray it three different times, letting it sit 10 minutes in between each time. And then once it's dry, you just bring it back inside because you want to do it outside in a well ventilated area. Bring it back inside, cut out your decal, and then we are going to place our decal into a bit of just regular water. It doesn't have to be cold or hot. 
I just kind of use warm temperature water. And so we're gonna put, uh, get our pumpkin. This is just a ceramic pumpkin from the Dollar Tree. It was kind of an ugly color. I painted it white with um, a matte spray paint. And then, like I said, you put your decal into the water, let it set for 30 to 60 seconds. Once you can start to slide that decal off of its backing, it's ready. So all you have to do then is get the surface that you're gonna add your decal to a little bit wet. So I'm just using my fingers here to get the front of my pumpkin a little bit wet. And then we're going to add our decal. So um, here in just a second, I'm gonna pull that decal out of the water and it just slides very easily off that backing. You can see that it just kind of slides off and you've got this full piece. And then we're just gonna add it to our pumpkin. Now, because our pumpkin is an odd shape, the decal isn't gonna fit on it perfectly. I did have some areas that kind of folded over onto itself as I was adding this decal. And to be honest, I couldn't even tell really where those folds were because of the colors of the decal and also because it is a transparent decal. So if it does kind of fold over on itself, it's kind of pulling in all those colors that are already there and it is very um it's super not noticeable so once you get your decal on you're going to push out as much of the water from underneath your decal with your fingers and then you're going to come in with a paper towel and just finish drying it up now you're going to let this sit for 24 hours or so to make sure that the water underneath your decal is completely gone. And once that is done, it is set permanently. So here's my cost at 375 for three of these little pumpkins. I know that the Hobby Lobby pumpkin is a much bigger um, pumpkin, but I think for three pumpkins and you get a full little set, I think this is a great value as well. So because we haven't done outtakes in a while, here are a few outtakes. Ooh, what in the heck happened? All of a sudden it's like super bright everywhere. Why? You guys don't want to see this, right? This mess back here. It's not good. Okay. I do. I don't. I do. I don't. Why do we say I do? I don't know. I do or I don't. Crack myself up sometimes. <sighs> I do. I do. You do. And like, what is up with this hair in here? I don't even know. <laughs> the messy mom bun. It's like, seriously, we're doing it today. We're doing the messy mom bun today. <laughs> God, I need to clean up my craft room <sighs> story of my life okay see my shirt is this happy Ooh. whoops sorry Put back on it says happy fall y'all happy happy fall y'all all right let's let's do this back up put that down there put hair on it Ooh, cat hair. Okay. <sighs> you see that blanket up there? It's got my my lizard. <laughs> she's not my lizard. She's my daughter's lizard. But you know who takes care of that lizard? Yeah, me. I'm the one who does it. I take care of the lizard. Not my daughter. She's just my lizard now. <laughs> she's cute. I guess let's see what we've got. Because I know. Okay, guys, that's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment down below. Let me know which dupe was your favorite. And as always, I hope you have a happy, healthy, and blessed day. And I will see you at the next video. Bye!